Hey everyone, in this video this is the second part and we'll be continuing our discussion with battery technology that I was discussing in my previous video and this is all based on Harvard studies of battery technology. In this one, what we are going to do is talk about charging infrastructure. First of all, what I wanted to let you guys know is the commercial success of electric vehicle is going to be requiring development of charging infrastructure which is going to be accessible easy to use and relatively inexpensive currently the charging uh, infrastructure are not widespread meaning in california it, it's normally assumed that if you own an electric vehicle in california it'd be good to go however if you were be uh, owning a electric vehicle in somewhere other than california it will be very hard for you to charge using a um, perhaps a charging station so it's technically not easy to use and relatively it's going to be more expensive because you will be utilizing more electrical power from your house all right second thing what i wanted to let you know is that there are two levels of charging that i'm going to be discussing in this um slide in total there are more than uh, there are about five levels of charging which i will be discussing in this video but first one uh, for example, let's take our 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. From our previous discussion, we found out that 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf was the second iteration of Nissan building an electric vehicle which has more battery cells uh, fit into a battery pack. All right, so level one would give us 1.4 kilowatt hour residential outlet. So residential outlet, uh, it means that whenever you uh, park your car inside your garage and charge it using a socket that is already being provided which you normally use for your application such as phone charging or something else that is giving out 1.4 kilowatt hour to the car if it's used to charge the car now the problem is using this level one charger will take several amount of time which might not be viable for a user who's using its electric vehicle now assuming that level one charger is used it comes out to be sixty dollars per month and you can see that sixty dollars paying for a charging of a car although if we were to eliminate the factor of time charging then spending sixty dollars to charge the car for a month is relatively inexpensive than what you would be paying for gasoline every month. Now let's talk about level two. When we move up in our degree of charging, we not only increase our base price of how much we are paying, but also we're adapting to lesser amount of time that might be utilized in charging the vehicle. All right, so one of the formulas that you can come up is saying that as the level of charging goes up the time of charging your electric vehicle goes down all right now let's go ahead and talk about level two level two consists of 220 volt 6.6 kilowatt hour system and this takes about one point five thousand dollars to two point two thousand dollars to recharge it and it only takes seven hours However, if you were to talk about level one charging, it would take one whole day. Perhaps if you leave it at the night and next morning, it would be only half charged. So uh, it is safe to say in nine hours, it would be only half charged. So if you were to talk about 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, it would only charge 12 kilowatt and you would burn the 12 kilowatt in just few couple of miles and then you would need to recharge it again so technically it's not viable for someone who is traveling long distance or even if uh, he or she is traveling here and there for normal um, you know uh, applications such as groceries um, or going to a mall or something like that now what uh, one thing we can do is that Tesla has came out with a home charging system which will triple the electric output of 220 volt line now how does this change thing this changes things because what needs to be done is that currently as I mentioned before 
In California, it's easy to go to a charging station, charge your electric vehicle when you're on the go. However, if you live in some other parts such as India or even Colorado or Denver or Delaware, it's not easy to find a charging station that might be near you when needed. So Tesla came out with home charging system and this multiplies the electric output. So doing so, it reduces the charge of time it takes to charge the car. Now how does the home charging of Tesla look like? So this Tesla is a home charging system, comes with a wall connector and it claims to be the fastest way to charge at home. Now doing so, you have to consider the installation fees and all other factors that might go into it uh, because technically what you're doing is building a smaller sized pump in the house. So doing so, it might come, um, you know, make the electric bills much higher. So let's put things in perspective. All right, doing so, what happens is that home charging technology will have to improve dramatically or commercially fast charging station will have to be widely deployed if electric vehicles are to compete with gasoline fueled cars. Currently, we're saying that electric vehicles are much better than gasoline, but there are still th some things or some factors we need to touch upon or improve upon dramatically in order to finally propose the idea that hey guys uh, the audience and the people of the nation should be buying electric vehicles and this might be enhancing our environment but this can only be done if everyone is able to rip out benefits as they would expect themselves to currently that is not the solution right now and currently tesla is proposing that this is the best and fastest charging however we can do much better so this is the article what we have been talking about and we conclude this by saying that we need to address the economic challenges around load management and in scenarios where high electric vehicle penetration and suggesting avenues for further research. So these are the two charging challenges that comes uh, when we talk about electric vehicles and putting it into perspective. First one being the energy efficiency, the distributed energy resources, the shifting demand patterns have been challenged to American electric utilities for some time. Now, these utilities are yes, uh, less concerned about the eventual magnitude of this incremental demand than the form EV charging might take. So how fast, where and when and how the power will be priced, these are all critical parameters which we need to discuss when the EV markets are revolving. Now, there are different levels of charging that like I mentioned. The level 1 and level 2 I've discussed it already in, our, in this video. And just to put things into a picturematic format, I have put up two pictures. As you can see, these are all the level 1 and level 2 types of charging that can be installed at home and currently can be used by anyone who doesn't even have an installation. So this requires zero installation fee and what the drawback comes is that although you're saving a lot of money for saving your installation fee, this takes forever to charge your vehicle. Like I mentioned, if we're talking about Nissan Leaf, it takes nine hours to charge only 12 kilowatt hour. All right. Now let's talk about statistics of level one and level two charging. So level one, it provides one per four kilowatts in US and simply it's a conventional wall socket and nothing else. And what you can do is have an adapter which is required from EV and put that in your socket. And technically this adapters will be available to you when you buy your electric vehicle. When you talk about level two chargings, we are upgrading it to uh, 220 watt output. So there are different motor houses that might have different types of sockets and the usually the bigger the socket is, uh, the more the volt uh, is um, supplied. So if you were to see the electric, um, the washing machine, the onboard uh, refrigerator, what kind of um, output they're using, they're probably using 220 watt output outlets. So most le uh, home level level two charging are almost commercial, but it's limited to 6.6 .6 kilowatt because of two reasons. First of them being the onboard inverter on the most existing EVs cannot handle significantly more than this level. 
and second is boosting the current current typically requires the installation of more expensive higher capacity circuitry so when we try to change one watt from diff to make it a different higher watt we need a transformer stepper and what this basically means is that uh, more the power goes in the less amount of time it takes to charge but since we are getting a stable standard current we need to amp that current up and in doing so we need uh, just like adapters we need transformers which would step that up and perhaps to put it in a simpler way the transformer would take care of amping the current up so you can safely use it to charge your electric vehicle and in the end what happens is doing so it requires less time to charge your electric vehicle now putting this into picture what it means is that level 3 4 and 5 different types of charging are going to be as such so the current you can see are outside it's not indoor and this is zero emission as you can see and these are particularly very bigger than the home charging that you saw before and the particular reason is that level 3 for example it's used to power uh, um, deliver power of 50 kilowatt level 4 is used to deliver 150 kilowatt and level 5 which is the ultra fast uh, which is giving to 350 kilowatt so as you can see the more expensive and more uh, higher the level you go into and you go into an ultra fast charging so the lesser amount of time it takes to charge your car lastly what I want to talk about is cost of all levels so when we talk about level one two three four five there are different time and different range and different um, money involved in installation of this so when we to put the things in very broad manner i've chosen this different um, levels of car for nissan leaf and what really happens when we use the 350 150 50 uh, level 2 max can be 19.2 kilowatt hour and level 2 standard which comes up to be 6.6 .6, which is the traditional house um, in modern modern times and level one is 1.4 which is the residential outlet so you can see that to charge only 13.65 kilowatt hours it takes 9 hour 45 minutes and you can see the whole table in the perspective of how much time it might take so as you can see the level 5 only takes 2 minutes and uh, in order to charge uh, after driving 100 miles which takes about 37 kilowatt hour and uh, level 5 only takes 6 minutes so once you drive 100 miles you just plug your car back in to the level 5 connector and it only takes 6 minutes to ch uh, charge it back up and you're ready to go another 100 miles and this gives out uh, the range added per minute um, so if you see that range every minute is 15.75 and just for comparison that every minute it just gives higher and higher and how much steeper the increase is depending on the level of con uh, converter or charging station you might be using so this is it for this video this video just uh, 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 briefly um, captured the details which was provided in harvard studies about um, charging levels and different levels of charging and uh, i hope i did good justice to it and if you liked it uh, give it a thumbs up subscribe and uh, have a good day.